Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Esper Spirit Sisters. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys have had a fantastic week. I'm really excited to jump into today's deck. But before we do, I just want to remind you, we do have a Dominaria giveaway going on right now until September 16th. We'll be giving away a draft booster box of the brand new set. So if you do want to check out all the details, there's a link down to our website. Uh, we also have a video over on our YouTube homepage. So I encourage you guys to check that out. One way to enter is just subscribing to the channel. Super easy. So if you happen to be here and you are not already subscribed, please make sure you do so. We'd really appreciate it. It's great to have you as part of our community. Uh, but let's talk about today's deck. This is a weird one, uh, 100%. Uh, but A, I wanted to build around specifically Spirit Sister's Call, which is a super strange card. It's an enchantment for three, a white and a black. At the beginning of your end step, you can choose a permanent card in your graveyard. You may sacrifice a permanent that shares a card type with the chosen card. If you do, return the chosen card from your graveyard to the battlefield, and then it gains if it would uh, leave the battlefield for any reason, you exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. Uh, I also wanted to make this rotation proof. So technically speaking, uh, I believe I am correct in saying everything in here is perfectly legal even after rotation. So just to put that in perspective, very much splashing kind of the black I, I don't love I say splashing it's a pretty heavy black splash but anyway let's talk about the deck so uh, this is really built around enchantments uh, so the focus of the list is to get a bunch of enchantments out hopefully get a couple in the yard in particular things like the sky turtle and the mirror shell crab hopefully bringing them back with Spirit Sisters Call by sacrificing something like a Circle of Confinement, a Meat Hook Massacre, a Borrowed Time, really any of these uh, to bring these cards back. Now, what we can do as well is create some creatures by just playing these enchantments off of the Hollowed Haunting and then use those creatures to sacrifice and get our way into these much bigger creatures. Uh, and because they both have a ward cost and they are fairly large, it should be relatively simple in finishing the game from there. But of course, that's not always the case. Uh, one thing to note, I've found uh, some really good uses for sacrificing an already played borrowed time. Uh, maybe you've hit a token with it and the creature doesn't come back, or maybe you've hit like a legendary creature, you can make them sacrifice one. Uh, and then later on, you can actually bring back the borrowed time once again, if you haven't already brought it back with the Spirit Sisters call. Uh, so very, very interesting there. Uh, we do utilize things like Tainted Indulgence as well as Faithful Mending. We've got the full four of both of these, which is a lot, but the idea being that we're filling up our graveyard and hopefully getting to the cards that we need. And then, of course, Kaito Shizuki is actually a very good one here as well. So not only that card draw, of course, uh, even if we have to discard, it's not the end of the world, but we actually can create the token and then sacrifice it at the end of the turn to get back one of our big guys if we need to. Uh, the mana base is, I think, relatively okay. We've got the Seed of the Empire. We We've got the uh, Soaring City and we've got the Abandoned Mire. So we squeeze all three of those in. And then really the full gambit of the Tri Land and then of course the, the dual lands here as well. A uh, little bit less black in the, the basic land section, but that's pretty much it. Pretty straightforward. Uh, again, I have no clue how this is going to go. We could lose every single game. I don't necessarily think this deck is good. So if you're looking for competitive, probably not going to be the deck for you, but if you're looking to have some fun with Spirit Sisters Call, I think this will be it. So we're going to have some fun, guys. Let's see what we can do. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. How do we feel about this hand? Um, relatively okay, actually. Um, we don't have the Black Source, but of course we do have the Faithful Mending. We've also got the interaction with the Sky Turtles. So if this does happen to be a creature deck, we can actually just bounce those creatures uh, as we see fit. We've also got the Double White, which is nice for that Hollowed Haunting. Uh, we've got all the lands we need to play that. So feeling okay, uh, to be honest. Um, Okay, uh, so we will let that hit, uh, or excuse me, resolve, and then I think we'll just go ahead and bounce the, the token here. Not super worried about that. Uh, we just go ahead and bounce it, and then we don't really have to worry about it again. So let's go ahead and do this. And again, we actually do get to pass and kind of just leave up interaction a lot of the time. If we find we don't need it, it's okay. We've got other things we can do, but uh, it does give us that ability quite easily. So... Let's see what we want to do. Um, all right. Do we care that much about this? Uh, actually, we'll hit the Minsk uh, with the Colossal Sky Turtle. Uh, again, 
Mostly because if they do replay it, it gives us a target for a future like borrowed time or something like that. Uh, and I think that might be helpful. So let's see what we can do. Um, I'm just going to drop the Hollowed Haunting. We are just trying to push off as much as we can on the um, uh, damage race. So they're really not dealing as much damage yet as we would expect them to. So hopefully we can make this work. Uh, would obviously love a Black Source. Really any kind of... Um... Alright. Uh... I mean, we can just Thirst for Discovery. Um... Which I think is probably okay. Well, let's just go ahead and do that. It's not exactly exciting, I know, but... Alright, uh, we'll discard these two. I think that's fine. Um, do we want a Circle of Confinement anything, or do we just want to leave this up? I think we're just going to leave up the Sky Turtle here, uh, and make sure that we bounce this on attacks. Uh, I think that will be more useful than anything else, and then we actually do have that Circle later on, which is great. So, okay. Interesting. All right, let's make sure we go ahead and bounce this. Uh, just get that out of there. There's the mints. Okay. Again, kind of expected it. I would love a... Well, Meat Hook Massacre does not get it done, actually. But uh, there are a number of things I would love to draw here. Um, let's make sure we circle of confinement. Um, let's see. I mean, I think it's just this. Uh, I think that's probably just the best bet. Um, let's go ahead and do this as well. Just to get Kaito kind of down. Um, I am going to throw the 1-1 one -one down here, mostly because I think we just need the blocks, uh, more so than anything else. They're obviously going to get a pretty big hit in here, uh, and I don't love that, but we'll see what we can do. Um, potentially. Uh, they do, this really, really pushes the envelope for us. Uh, ooh, that's good too. Okay. Yeah, not great. Not great at all. Um, <laughs> I think we just have to, like, double block here just to get rid of it. Um, don't love doing that, but I think we kind of have to, to be honest. I don't know that we have much of a, a better choice. Uh, that's not bad. Let's do this. Okay, um, let's discard that, let's borrow time, just gonna give us another one of these, which is great, um, and we'll borrow time on this, then we can sky turtle up the goldspan dragon, potentially. I think that might be the best shot. Unfortunately, we're not really hitting also our um, our spirit sister's call, which is kind of annoying, but again, not the end of the world. It's it's fine. They are gonna reconfigure it. Um, okay, so they're just trying to get max damage in. Makes total sense. Um, I guess we should have, eh, that's okay. Let's go ahead and bounce this. Um, yep. The question is, do we actually handle this? Well, I guess, excuse me, it does have Menace, so we can't handle that, but that's okay. Um, all right, cool. Um, they can just replay Goldspan if they'd like. They've got the mana here to do it, so they certainly could, or we'll potentially see that last card, or I guess, I mean, they could just level up the Bard class. All of these are really good options for them, uh, <laughs> which is terrible for us. Um, interesting. All right, let's do this first. Hmm. I think we discard that. Let's do this. See what we draw. Ugh. I don't want to discard any of these. Um. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I do think the land is probably the only thing we could do. Um. And I think they just win right so we can do this um but they just have gold span dragons so there's really not much we can do yeah they just have us all right hey good game again we kind of expected that it was going to be a little rough so that's okay let's go ahead and jump into a game too check out this month's patreon rewards celebrating our return to dominaria 
If you want to pick these up, feel free to visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Let's hope for a little better. Uh, this is a bit of an interesting hand, but I will try it. Um, not super optimistic, but I think it's potentially okay. Uh, let's go ahead and lead with the Shipwreck Marsh. That's one thing that I think we're going to need to find a solution for, maybe. Uh, and maybe that uh, or affects the deck building much more than we initially think it might. But one thing to think about is we're losing the pathway lands uh, in this new standard environment. Um, those are actually really important for a lot of you know varying reasons. And so one thing to just think about is that uh, without those... The mana constraints are going to be a little bit challenging. We're going to have to run more tapped lands versus, uh, you know, the, the pathways that don't come into play tapped. It's just stuff to think about, um, which is just a little tricky to, to play around. And that's all it is, but uh, it is worth noting. Um, also worth noting, we are going to be up against decks that are well tooled out much more so than we are, solely because we are trying to go, uh, you know, rotation proof, uh, which is a little bit different. Um, Go ahead and discard a land. Pretty easy. Uh, let's do this. And, I mean, pretty straightforward hollowed haunting, I think. Um, it looks like they might be stuck on land. Which is fine by me. Um, that's very good, in fact. So, we'll see if we can make this work. Um, I do hope we get a game out of it, though. I feel bad when these kinds of things happen. I know it hurts on my side when it happens to me. So, I certainly hope that they can... Uh, find a way to get through this one, but we'll see. This might be a poison cup as well, uh, if this is mono black. Not really sure. Um, given that they're stuck on lands, that is gonna be tricky. <laughs> All right, so next turn, uh, we can of course just drop Spirit Sisters Call. Um, although, I'm kind of wondering if we even need to. We don't really have anything in the graveyard. One thing we could have done is, of course, uh, sacrifice, or excuse me, not uh, discarded a basic land and instead, you know, Sky Turtles or whatever. Uh, but I didn't want to discard too many cards because obviously Sky Turtle is just a really good one. Um, and so it is nice to be able to just bounce something if we can or whatever it might be. Um, but that's fine. Okay, so they do have blue. Uh, very interesting. Okay. Curious to know what that might be. Um, they are also playing quite slowly. <laughs> uh, hopefully we can get three games in, but we'll see. Uh, I would like to start getting some tokens in uh, with the Hollowed Haunting. I think that would obviously be our, our route to victory if we can make it happen. Um, and then potentially get rid of some of these Sky Turtles and things like that later. Okay. Um... So we can do this, and I mean, the nice thing is we don't have to use this right away, so I'm going to just go for it and pass. Do we want to uh, to do that? I'm going to decline. Um, that is kind of interesting. You can bring the lands back, and they do come into play untapped, uh, which is kind of interesting. There's some scenarios there where that becomes useful. Um, unfortunately, here, of course, we did tap out for it, so that's not going to happen, but it's kind of interesting. Um, all right. Let's see, Epona, what are you going to do? Let's see, let's see. Again, they are playing a little bit slow. I guess it's a good time to remind you, uh, if you happen to be a content creator watching the channel, uh, first and foremost, thank you for watching the channel. We really do appreciate it. It's great to have you guys here. Uh, if you would like please feel free to send us some video content. We can work with you, email us, DM us, whatever. Uh, and we'll work with you. We'd love to feature you in a guest slot on the channel. We do that every Saturday uh, as they're available. Um, I know we've got one, I believe, this Saturday, but I think we're not booked out anywhere else. So if you guys want to take advantage of that, even if you already have, feel free. Uh, we'd really appreciate it. It'd be a great opportunity. Um, all right, let's go ahead and Tainted Indulgence here. I know this is a little aggressive, but I would like to see if we get another enchantment that we can drop just to get this powered up a little bit. I mean, the opponent clearly doesn't have very much, um, but we are going to play this out, obviously, uh, and hope for the best, even though they are playing exceptionally slowly. I do really hate when people do this. Um, I know it's frustrating not to get lands, but I mean, come on. Don't, don't be that guy. <laughs> That's all I can say. 
Um, but we'll see what happens. Um, we are going to be able to get the sky turtle into the graveyard, and then of course we can sack up uh, for sacrificing the one one into the sky turtle pretty easily, which is kind of nice. Um, if we even get there, the opponent might just give up. Um, all right, we'll just do this. We will attack for one. We will go ahead and pass. Um, I'm leaving up the mirror shell crab, by the way. Um, and now we get to just kind of wait. Uh, so if they don't play anything, we just faithful mending. If they do, we mirror shell crab and just counter it. And then we're, I think, pretty reasonably ahead. I mean, I think we're already pretty reasonably ahead, but um, I think that would really solidify the deal here. Um, one thing to note, we do not have the ability of playing the Colossal Sky Turtle as a uh, as a creature itself. We do have to sac uh, a creature into it or um, sack an enchantment to get to it. So just something to keep in mind here. But again, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> All right. Come on, opponent. You got this. You got this. I would love to get a third game in. That's the only reason I, I hate when this kind of thing happens. Like, if it's on my own and I'm not recording, sure, it's annoying, but it's not the end of the world. On recording, I hate to show you guys these. I mean, I don't cut games out, so, like, you guys see all of it. But I just, I hate when this kind of thing happens. Because it's not fun for anybody involved. Um, but, you know, got to be honest. There we go. We won. That was really strange. We did get to see the deck kind of start to do its thing though, which was nice. So let's go ahead, let's jump into a game three before we run out of time here. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Uh, this is a little bit of a sketchy hand, but I will try and keep it. Um, again, don't love it, of course, but that's fine. Let's, uh, let's do this because this opens up more opportunities for any untapped land, uh, helping us get to either a circle of confinement or faithful mending, unfortunately didn't get either. Uh, looks like overgrown farmland, so maybe Selesnia enchantments could be a lot of things. Uh, certainly not great. <laughs> um, that's okay. All right. Um, hmm. uh, do we just go for that? Or do we just go for the Kaito? Um, all of these are reasonable options, I think. I'm actually going to go to Kaito here. Um, I know that sounds kind of odd, but I'm actually going to draw and discard a card. So part of the reason I want to do this, by the way, is because um, we kind of just need to get further into the deck to make sure that we're hitting our land drops. We've got Hollowed Hauntings we'd like to play, and of course the Spirit Sisters Call is eventually going to be up there on the list. We can actually deal with these creatures like at any time with our enchantment removal. I'd kind of like to let them hit us for a little bit here before, you know, we get the Hollowed Haunting down and then really capitalize on it later. Um, but we'll see. Ooh, kind of messed up there, I guess, but that's fine. Um, I mean, I think it's just Circle of Confinement. I guess we could borrow time. Let's do this. Let's do this. We'll hit the uh, Naturalist just so it's not cheapening up all of their stuff. Clearly, they didn't have a rune in hand, or I think they would have played it. Um, maybe that's incorrect. I don't know. But uh, this also, the borrowed time is also a little bit more flexible. Uh, this only hits creatures. So this hits actually any permanent. Uh, so obviously more helpful. Are they going to borrow time our Kaito or the Circle of Confinement? <laughs> uh, could be either one. Um, kind of interested to see what they actually do here. This is fun. Little enchantment war. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's Kaito. Seems good. Uh, we still have borrowed time to deal with that if we want. Um, I'm just going to take the three, by the way, here. Not super stressed about that. Interesting. Um, do we take the risk? I think we do. I think we kind of need to. Okay. Um... Yeah, we'll just discard those two. Let's get that down. Um, and I actually do think we'll just borrow time the visitor. It just kind of leaves out the uh, crazy attacks and that kind of stuff. And so we're not just losing out to, you know, three damage every turn or at that point, four or five, etc. It just kind of escalates. So interesting. Okay. Um, hmm. I think we Spirit Sisters Call. Uh, 
we attack, we sacrifice the 1-1 one, one and get a mirror shell crab. Seems pretty good. Uh, probably not gonna get hit by any enchantment removal just for the simple fact that it's really expensive to do that. Uh, and so my hope is that we can kind of outpace here, um, get things working in our favor. Um, I think we do kind of need to go for the hollowed haunting uh, just so we've got some future, you know, attacks, things like that. Uh, do we want to sacrifice anything here? Um, actually, yeah, maybe. I'm going to sacrifice the call itself. And so this way, next time we play that borrowed time, we're actually going to get double hollowed haunting triggers so we can potentially outpace them. Um, they've got a wedding announcement. That's very good. Uh, but again, we're kind of doubling up on the hollow taunting. I don't know that that's the right call, by the way. Uh, sacrificing the Spirit Sisters call itself. I don't, I don't really have a good gauge on if that's a great call or not. But um, my hope is we actually get a. We did not. I would have loved to have gotten um, a. What should we call it? Meat hook massacre. I don't know why that was so difficult for me to think about. All right, let's do this. Uh, we are 100% gonna get this hollowed haunting out of here. Um, and I think we just leave everything else up. Still not attacking. Um, I don't think we're in a position to, but I think we are in a much better position to start, you know, kind of taking over. Uh, looks like they're gonna borrow time as well. This is hilarious. Uh, yeah. Can they, are they gonna double it with Weaver? Okay, so they're just trying to get there. <laughs> okay. They're borrowed timing the borrowed time. Um, yeah. So they do get two things. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be a hollowed haunting. Yeah. All right. Seems pretty good. Um, they don't have a great attack still, though. And we do have the Seed of the Empire that we can use if they attack. That would be helpful. I was about to say. Really? Really? They have no mana available. Does this benefit them in some way? That I'm just missing? Oh, they are drawing a card. Duh. Alright, let's do that as well. Go ahead and ditch these two lands. Um, good to get those off the top of the deck, to be honest. That was pretty important. Blech. Don't love this, but let's go ahead and thirst. Discard those two, I think. Uh, so we can play this, and that just gives us another mirror shell grab. Um, hmm. Not sure. Really not sure. Um, this is gonna quickly get get out of hand here, I think, for sure. Do we counter that? No, because they just play around it. That we will counter. Dang, they are getting a lot of damage in here. Okay, uh, I think we're gonna get outpaced, guys, unfortunately. Um, let's counter that. All right. So they do get the counters, but they don't get anything off of the field, which I think is important. We're kind of just whiffing on, off the top of our deck. We're not drawing enchantments. That's like literally all we need is enchantments. Um, because if we get really anything, we should be in much better shape. Um, I think we just block like this. Uh, yep. Hollow taunting. <laughs> um, do we risk it with the faithful mending? Nah, okay. Just do this. I'll just do this because I don't think we're going to find a good target for it. And yeah, I mean, I think we are pretty dead here. 
We did kind of get to see it do its thing, but they were able to borrow time on top of everything and double up on some stuff. I think uh, I think that's going to be it. I'm going to go ahead and good game them here, guys. Unfortunate. Uh, but you know what? Still kind of fun. Let's talk about this deck. All right, guys. So first and foremost, I know I gave up just a little bit early. We still had quite a bit of life there in that last game. But the reality is they were about to take almost all of it, if not all of it, very quickly. Uh, and there's not a lot we could have done about it. Uh, how did the deck run? Um, well, not great. Um, I think the the problem with Spirit Sisters Call is really just that it's a bit slow. Uh, it takes a lot of mana, it's a big investment. The Hollowed Hauntings also don't do anything as soon as they hit the board. And so I'm wondering if maybe there's like a flex spot that you can run there, uh, that maybe something else would be more helpful, maybe more removal or meat hooks or, you know, something like that. Even something like a farewell could be helpful. I'm not really sure what the, the best option would be. Uh, but regardless, it was still a fun deck. Again, this was more of a fun experiment than an actual like competitive deck. So if you were expecting competitive, this is not it. Uh, but it was a blast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really did. Uh, again, I hope you guys have a fantastic Friday, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow.